So if you remember, I have my yellow limb working here, and I can swing it around the red one, but the magenta one is not moving with it. And so why is that happening? So this is happening because if we look down here, right, we set up our body, which is the red one, and then we have our, well, I've got it labeled left arm, which is sort of this, but anyway, it's got this yellow piece. Um, and nowhere in my definition of what's going on with this left arm have I referenced what's going on with the body. I just have it absolute in the world coordinate system. And then my test box down here, okay, my naming is, is silliness, but anyway, this is the magenta one at the top, the pink one at the top. And nowhere when I say where is it going to live, does it have anything to do with where the yellow one was located. So what I need to do is I need to update my positioning for this text, for this, for this magenta box to have something to do with where I put the previous limb before it, rather than just placing it directly in the world coordinate system. Okay, what can I do to get these things connected? Well, I have some matrix, which is setting up the yellow arm. So that's defining a coordinate system. And so I can just use that as the starting coordinate system for the pink piece. So here I've just started by setting the, the, the pink piece's matrix equal to the yellow piece's matrix. And then I go ahead and run some more things. So now what do I get? Well, I go over here and I move my yellow arm. And now a couple of things have happened. First of all, my pink piece is now attached to my yellow piece. Right? It's in that coordinate system because I've, I've got the rotation in there with, with it also since I started from that. But it's also gotten moved around. Now, why has that happened? Well, it happened because I had originally tried to position this pink piece relative to the world coordinate system. But that's not what I want to do. I want to position this pink piece relative to this yellow piece's coordinate system. So the red is living in the world coordinate system. The yellow is living in the world coordinate system. Right? We're rotating this yellow in the world coordinate system. And, but I, I wish this pink piece was somehow attached to this coordinate system in a different position, so I need to go change my matrices to make that true. Okay, I've commented out a bunch of my extra things because I just want to understand what coordinate system I'm in anyway. right? I think I'm in this yellow box coordinate system, so I think it starts down here someplace is the origin. So all I've done is start from the coordinate system and add a translate to go upwards by 0.7. So it gets my pink box up here. Now there's a couple of things to notice. First of all, I haven't added my scales and rotates and other things, so my box should be one by one by one, but it's still, it's got the shape of this yellow one. So what's going on here? So let's try to turn and take a look. So indeed, it has the same shape as this yellow one, and this is happening. I'll tell you about why this is happening in a second. Let me talk about this annoying flashing. This annoying flashing that's happened here is just called Z fighting. Uh, when we get around to talking about a Z buffer in this class, then we're going we're gonna to fix that up. Now, uh, for the purposes of this assignment, I'll show you how to fix that up in a little bit. And, I'll, and we'll, we'll learn why is it happening at some future point. So why is this pink box is the same shape as this yellow box? Well, the coordinate system that we're in contains whatever transforms that we did previously. And if we go to what we did up here, we had some scales in this previous coordinate system and some rotates in this previous coordinate system, right? So it's in this same space, this squish space that we made up here. Now if we want to re... we could just go ahead in this squish space, but often what you just want to do is not squish your space, but just move your translates and rotates. So we're going to try to take care of that now. So I'm now going to store an intermediate matrix here. And um, why am I doing that? So this scale and this translate are really about setting up the size of the yellow box. And these coordinates are really about moving the yellow box to what's going on. So remember that these things are stacked from the last one is on the right-hand side. So my yellow box is first translated a little bit and then scaled down and then moved to wherever I want to do it. Right. So they, they run in this reverse order. So I'm going to try to save this yellow coordinate in the position right here. So let me come over here and let me rerun this. Um, and now what's going on? My pink box, even though I'm trying to save it, I saved the, this position in the middle, is still shrunk down. So what's going on here? Uh, right, I saved this yellow coordinate before we did the scale, and then I switched to using the yellow coordinate to set up this pink box. So it shouldn't be getting the scale anymore. 
But remember, JavaScript passes by pointer for complex objects unless you do something otherwise. So even though I've set up these yellow coordinates to grab the left matrix at this position, um, I'm going I'm to rename this the yellow coordinates matrix. Um, I went ahead and changed the left arm. And since I changed the left arm down below, this got passed into this yellow coordinates matrix, which isn't what we want. So in order to force it to um, actually make a copy of this thing, I'm going to put a new matrix forward like this. And now it's going to force it to make a copy of the left arm at this point into this yellow matrix coordinate system. So let's take a look at this. So we rerun this thing. Okay, now I have my giant pink box uh, up here. So remember, our default box is one by one and it's attached onto our yellow coordinate system. So the, the origin of our yellow coordinate system was here. Uh, and I moved up seven, right? So down here, I took my yellow coordinate system and I set a translate up seven into this position. But I haven't picked up the scaling that happened in this yellow coordinate system because I grabbed the matrix before that point in time, uh, before I uh, rendered it. So you may not want the whole matrix, which is positioning and scaling and doing other things with, uh, with one of your segments. You may want to get only the positions that have to do with transferring the, the coordinate system frame. Let, let's make sure we're still moving around with it. Yeah, our, we're still moving our whole cube around with this thing. So now we don't have a weird scaled coordinate system. So I can now go back and add in uh, my scaling and local transforms to get this pink guy in the right spot relative to this yellow one. So I've now mucked around with my color a little bit to try to get this pink box into the right location and at the right scaling um, onto my yellow piece. So let's go take a look at how that's, if that's working, right? So I have it on here. I can move around, but I st I've still got my, my Z fighting. So now how are we going to take care of that? That's happening because there's a pink piece and a yellow piece, which are in exactly the same position up to floating point precision, uh, right? You can see that they're exactly aligned here. Uh, and so floating point errors essentially randomly make one or the other show up in front. So what we can do to fix that is we can try to move around this pink box so that it's not exactly lined up with this yellow box. So to get rid of this Z fighting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my pink box in front of the yellow box by just a little bit. So I moved it negative, meaning move it forward. And I just moved it by 0.001 so that it's just not floating point precisely aligned, right? This is the Z component moving it forward. So if we go take a look at what's going on, now our Z fighting is, is, is fixed up in this case. So we still need to be able to make this pink piece rotate on its, its own. So let's go see if we can figure out where we can insert a transformation which is going to cause this pink piece to move. So just to be sure that I know um, which slider I want to hook up to get this last thing, I've gone ahead and stuck a rotate 45 at an appropriate place in the code just to see that the right thing is, ha is happening over here. And this is where I've stuck it. So this is where I'm going to try to attach a new variable in order to be able to rotate this piece. Okay, I've gone ahead and added a new slider here, this magenta slider. And, th and that's something that you, that you already know how to do. So I won't walk through that. I'm going to go ahead and just use the variable that gets saved out of that here inside of my rotate. And let's take a look at what happens uh, when I to use this. So we can still rotate our, our yellow piece and now we can also rotate the magenta piece separately. So if you can get this working then this is the hardest part about doing hierarchical graphics. Right? You have to get the coordinate system when you when you take one one link and um, set up a new coordinate system your next object has to be attached to the coordinate system uh, that you just had. So if you can get to this then it's no problem. If you want to add another piece out here, you use the same principle and you attach to the magenta coordinate system and I can get another cube out here. If I need to have more limbs, right, so this is just one arm, if I need, you know, four legs and they need to behave separately, you just, you just repeat this kind of process and you're going to be able to do